Okay, it's calm before the storm. Completely flat water. Uh, we hear thunder and lightning. There's some. And, um, Segalon's got the Uno cards. Got the cards out. Stefan's figuring out how to use the VHF. <laughs> <laughs> under there and trace the neutral and see where it's connected to in the engine room and report back to Outremer. Mm -hmm. So you should be the one going in there. <laughs> Why? It's like a coffin. First? That's above my pay grade. Yeah, well, <laughs> I have to look first what it looks like and then one of us has to go into the... It's like a magic trick. Don't bump it. It'll fall. I've got it propped up there with the boat hook. Yeah, it's not perfect design because look. You can sleep? You, well, I can sleep in there, but I can also reopen it. You know, even if you close it, you have this little safety mechanism that you can pull. And it, I assume it pulls, yeah? Yeah. It pulls the pin so you can come out. You're not locked in. Yeah, unless I put a lock. Yes. And I lock you in. Okay, so a little bit of an update. We have a front moving in. Actually, it might be two. We're not sure. And um, we're in Georgetown because we were going to have Stefan's daughter, Segalin, who came with us across the Atlantic, meet us here. But her flight is supposed to arrive right in the middle of the worst of it, which is a bad idea. So, uh, and she's on spring break, of course. So we have two factors. One is trying to change her flight to arrive a day earlier, because at least then she, we, she could get on the boat with us. Um, and then the second thing is Georgetown doesn't have a lot of great options for the wind directions that we're gonna be seeing. Um, and all of the mooring balls, of course, are, are booked, that are, good, that are decent, that are good. So we have decided to move the boat into another area and uh, I think it's called Hooper's Bay and um, it's a little more exposed in one area but then it's protected with the strongest winds. We feel pretty confident, knock on wood, not, I'm knocking on wood, about our anchor because we did do the anchor test in Saint Tropez uh, with 40 42 knot gusts um, and we were pretty good sustained for a few hours so we were we were good um, and Hooper's Bay should have good holding so that's the situation we're not exactly sure how we're gonna get Segalin um, I think there's maybe a water taxi because we were closer to the dock where the taxis do the drop-off from the airport and now we're a little bit further away I don't know we'll find out um, so that's the situation. Uh, we're in the Bahamas, it's cold again. I've got my little down vest on and um, we'll keep everybody posted. Segalin's back, just in time for the storm. She doesn't know what she's in for. We got our mule. I know. <laughs> what did she get? Uh, oops. A new selfie stick. And a bunch of goodies in there. And so many goodies. This box after boxes kept arriving. Yeah. 
little what else do you have? One more little thing. One more little thing. Uh, I know. Here you go. Oh, I'm so excited. Been My purse try, broke. Try and test it. Broke. Yep. Yep. So now I have a purse. Okay. Anything else? No. The, I mean, I think that's the filter. Funny. I think it's in there. Okay, so I think it's time to discuss what's been going on over the last day and a half that we've been agonizing over. And basically, there is a large system that is coming through the Bahamas, Northern Bahamas in particular. And we showed up at an anchorage that we felt like would give us good protection. And when we showed up, of course, we were the only boat here which is always very concerning uh, when there's a bunch of boats everywhere else and no boats where you are in this huge harbor. Uh, not harbor, it's like a bay. bay. <clears throat> so we get here and um, we get contacted from our buddies over at Velvet who are veterans of these waters, been cruising here 34 years. And I mean, I'll paraphrase and say basically they thought we were crazy to anchor here. And we're very concerned about uh, incoming wind um, because it was such an exposed bay. So we started second guessing ourselves. Um, Stefan went through a very precise, precision look at all of the models and um, you know, what the data showed is that the wind should be coming from directions where we're fully protected. And so we kind of settled in. Uh, then we had a guy come over in a dinghy and he said to us, no one ever anchors here. The holding is, is rock seabed, so um, the anchors don't set right. And it's highly exposed and expect surge. So, of course, I start looking at everything and, and being concerned about that. Um, so we spend the night. So that was Thursday night. And Thursday night was fine. It was a little rolly, but it was completely manageable. We moved Segalin's flight up a day because the uh, forecast had said the worst of it was going to be late Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and so she showed up, we were able to pick her up at the beach, um, which all worked out fine. And, um, then we were prepared for sort of a, a sporty night, potentially Friday night. So that was last night. So the last night came and went and the wind did as it was predicted to do and, um, calm, no surge no real swell to speak of, you know, just like it being at a safe anchorage. And the wind gusts were what, like maybe up to 30? 30. Um, but maintained wind was, was what, like 15, 16, something like that? Yeah, high teens. High teens. Um, and Stefan dove on the anchor a couple of times. We backed down on it um, to 2,000 horsepower yeah, on no, both but inches. LPM. RPM, sorry. And, you know, it didn't move. It looked like sand. It didn't look like rock. Um, and we felt pretty confident about our decision still. Um, what else did we do? Oh, we let out chain. We let out, what was it, like 35, 40 meters of chain? 45, 45 meters of chain. Um, so we have quite a bit out, and there were literally no boats. Um, so then a couple boats started showing up maybe Friday. Um, so there's like one, two, three, four boats and us, and everybody's super spread out. In the other areas in, in Georgetown, boats are all kind of squished together in some specific areas, and um, we just don't want to be around boats that are dragging or we don't want to drag into somebody if that does happen. So uh, we prefer to be really spread out and away from people. So last night came and went and um, still the conditions are good. 
the wind is supposed to shift and so we do need to move uh, and we're seeing people kind of moving now some evidence of moving the tricky part is right when we need to move which is when the, we can see the sun is between a cluster of thunderstorms um, and which means of course unpredictable winds and it's at low tide so that doesn't make us feel super comfortable but it is what it is so that's kind of my take on things uh, what's been going on but we're learning a lot about weather and looking at all the models and understanding uh, these waters a little bit better because we don't have the local knowledge Okay, situation update. Um, we just got a severe weather warning. A little bit earlier, we left the anchorage we were at and we came to another protected area that has a different wind range than the one we were at uh, that we're expecting. Um, we hear thunder in the background. So the rain's coming and we've got a few boats around what Stefan did is he put a backup bridle um, and hopefully everything holds and uh, we've never seen 60 knots though so we'll see anything you want to add um, whatever is going to happen I hope it happens soon and quick <laughs> <laughs> right. And then we have a good oh well. Because he's sitting next to the roaming fender, so you brought it up. <laughs> How are you doing, Segalin? Doing good. Yeah, I hear we have to have our phones and iPads confiscated so they're in the microwave, so that's a bummer, but okay. <laughs> so yeah, so we put everything in the uh, makeshift Faraday cage. And um, yeah, we'll videotape as we go along. So what do you like about this anchorage? Um, so, yeah, our strategy had a, as a risk because we were always planning to do a phase one move and phase two because there was to be a little light period of time during the day. So the bad thing is the two bad winds were coming at night. The good thing during the day we could move. So now we moved to have better protection from uh, northwest and even potentially north. So, but what we discovered in this anchorage is the sand is super like thick. When I tried to move it with my hand, it was like, like super good holding. So I feel, compared to the other one, uh, I feel really good like the, the anchor is not going to move, we're just going to rotate. Uh, so I like this about this anchorage. We have some people around, but you know, not, not too close. So we'll have to wait and see. What do you think, Segalin? Is it going to pass under us or is it going to pass over us, that thing? I mean, hopefully not over us, that seems... Okay, it's calm before the storm. Completely flat water. Uh, we hear thunder and lightning. There's some. And, um... Segalin's got the Uno cards. Got the cards out. Stefan's figuring out how to use the VHF. <laughs> we uh, turned all the all the instruments off and uh, put everything in the Faraday cage. So, and all that for this. Yeah, that's that's our new saying. <laughs> all that for this. <laughs> yeah, when a weather system comes through, um, there's a lot you're monitoring days before. Because you don't know the area, you're asking yourself a lot of questions. Um, there is no perfect solution, perfect spot. So you're trying to take a lot of variables into account and the wind rotation is going to happen like 360. So, but you need to think like, okay, I'm going to find a spot that is better for predominant wind. So you're trying to narrow down your variables, uh, but you're asking yourself a lot of questions. So, and then the anticipation, 
you know it's coming how much like you hear people like uh, well we had our friends who had uh, 60 knots like 40 nautical miles above us we didn't we get like 30 but you hear like people talk, telling stories that so it can be so you have be. to plan for worst case scenario yeah so you it's pretty much yeah you have to plan for worst case scenario and um and so you have to do a lot of st stuff and then we had a big thunderstorm so we tried to disconnect uh, like turn off the the two autopilot to just remove the vhf antenna will that do something i don't know uh, the boat that was anchored with us prior to us moving here ended up moving after us and bad luck in the new spot they got hit by lightning fifty thousand dollars of like um uh, of electronics to be replaced so anyway that took a days of like focusing on weather looking at every single app and blah 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 so yeah now we need to shift our minds enjoy the day uh, there was a second thunderstorm system that was supposed to come through and be a lot worse so then we were anticipating that and it was like four knots of wind nothing and then 20 or 30 knots of wind and no thunderstorm so but yeah, I think Seglin's completely over us looking at our weather apps and talking about weather and debating weather and looking at all the models and getting advice on the weather. She kind of just wants to do her spring break and go to the beach. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do with her today. Are we getting lost? Now we found the regular trail, much nicer. We found quite a few lizards already. Yeah. Walking to choose better wax. Now I'm in the middle. You'd rather be in the middle than the front or the back? Well, I told you I walked into two of them already. That's one too many. for that side of the island. It's amazing. The ocean's beautiful and powerful. It's a good place to like ponder life. Every afternoon, our neighbor plays loud music. We are very lucky that he has good taste. His music is rather good, <laughs> so so that's pretty good. Zagalin's leaving us today. Bye bye, Awen. I will give this part to Brahmas. Very relaxing. <laughs> You have to kiss me under the bridge. Hurry up. It's a fancy bridge. I feel like we're in Paris. Yeah. There she goes. Bye bye. Bye. Love you. Love you too. Bye. We didn't take a picture, the three of us.